Hi, and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this high voltage power supply that I use to run my homemade nitrogen lasers. This power supply is capable of generating 30,000 volts at a fairly reasonable current, so let's stick this on the bench and take a look. Here's the high voltage supply I use to drive my uh, nitrogen laser. Um, on the front panel, we have the high voltage output, which is a, an insulated feed through. Uh, there's no real need for the insulated feed through, I suppose, um, but it kind of looks cool. So it was included in the build. Um, we've got the negative side um, of our high voltage output. We've got micro ammeter on the front there uh, that actually reads, you know, it's set to read uh, kilovolts. Um, so zero to 50. Uh, the power supply itself is capable of outputting, you know, about 30,000 volts before bad things start to happen. Uh, we've got a front panel switch, so we can switch the power supply on and off. Um, and we've got a push button um, as well. So when I'm doing things like testing um, nitrogen lasers, if I just want to give it a quick blip um, with the push button, I can do. We'll take off the uh, lid and have a look at the guts of this thing. Um, it's actually a really, really straightforward build, um, especially in 2020 where you can get all of the parts very, very cheaply. Um, on the right hand side here, we've got a ZVS driver. Um, you can pick these up uh, quite cheaply off eBay. Uh, these are designed to drive transformers like this to their to their resonance. Um, and, and again, you know, you can have these for like four or five pounds on eBay. Um, cheaper, I would say, than, you know, if you were to go out and get the parts, so you get the inductors, the capacitors, your two big MOSFETs, heat sinks, spin up a PCB, um, all the rest of the things, you know, you'd be, it'd be quite an expensive deal, but you know, you can pick these up dirt cheap now. Uh, back in the day, uh, I used to build these myself. Um, on heat sinks, so you know I'm quite well aware of uh, how expensive they can get or used to get, um, but not anymore. We've got an AC um, flyback transformer here, and I've picked an AC transformer because I want to be able to uh, multiply my own um, output voltage to get you know to tailor this uh, power supply to my specific needs. So this is a very uh, old uh, AC flyback out of a, an old-style CRT monitor. Um, on the left-hand side here, we've got a voltage multiplier. Uh, this used to be a tripler, I'd actually set up like three stages in here, um, but I've removed a stage. Um, it, it was uh, producing just too high a voltage for the need that I wanted. I wanted, um, I wanted to, to trade off the voltage for current so I can drive the nitrogen laser much, much faster. Um, so I've just mounted this on a piece of uh, plexiglass. If I wanted more voltage out of this, I would have to either pot this or uh, put it in a container with oil uh, to prevent flashover. On the output stage itself, um, I've got three 20 meg uh, high voltage resistors in parallel um, just to reduce the output current uh, so that, you know, in, in the case of a dead short, um, nothing too serious will happen with the uh, power supply. And, you know, to, for all intents and purposes, when a nitrogen laser fires, it is in fact, um, you know, it would appear as a short circuit to the supply. So I don't want to damage the multiplier. Um, it's most likely that out of all the things that would fail in here, it would be the multiplier first and then the line output transformer. To read off the high voltage, um, I'll just tip this forward a little bit. I've got two 500 meg ohm high voltage resistors, uh, so a gig ohm in total, um, and I've worked out you know, the resistance of these and the resistance of the coil in the meter to, to get myself uh, um, you know, an appropriate division uh, to display on the, on the meter there. Um, I've got a, a diode in series with the meter as well, uh, just in case anything peculiar happens when we short out the supply and it, it tries to swing negative so it doesn't damage the, the moving coil meter. Um, I've tried digital meters uh, before. If you intend to build something like this, my advice is don't. Um, go with analog. Digital meters do not like working anywhere near um, high voltage at all. For accurately measuring um, high voltages, uh, you, you need a high voltage probe. Um, so here's one made by RS Components. Um, again, these appear um, at auction and on eBay at ridiculous prices occasionally. Uh, this particular one's good up to 40,000 volts. Um, I, I think I've had this for many, many years now. Um, it's the kind of probe that you would use for, um, you know, like testing the high voltage inside of um, old CRT monitors. A uh, very, very useful bit of kit to have. Um, I have the power supply switched on at the moment. Um, and if I take the uh, crocodile clip from the ground, we should be able to draw a spark from the output. Um, if I use my high voltage probe and just hook on to the uh, terminal there, we can see it's reading 22,000 volts on the meter. Um, and on the front panel meter itself, you can see that I've obviously worked out the resistance correctly because it's reading exactly 22 um, on the meter as well. In 
In the power supply I use for the nitrogen laser, as I said before, uh, there's a very large resistance um, between the output of the multiplier and the output of the power supply itself. Uh, you know, this is to uh, reduce the available current so that I don't destroy the uh, multiplier stack. Um, and when we draw an arc off it, um, it looks kind of feeble, um, but there is actually an awful lot of current flowing, um, even in that very feeble looking um, arc. I've zoomed right in there so that we can see this. You know, because of the because of the ballast resistance, I can quite happily do this all day and, and not have to worry that I'm damaging the damaging the power supply. So I have one of these ZVS drivers here uh, connected to a line output transformer. Um, I very, very simply um, wound about 10, ten turns of wire around the, uh, the ferrite core as my primary. Uh, currently this is switched on um, and you should be able to draw arcs out of the output. So judging by the gap that the voltage is jumping there, there's probably in the region of about 10,000 volts or so. Um, with this simple setup. It's only been driven off um, a small 12 volt uh, wall wart, um, so I'm not really shoving um, a great amount of power through it. Here's a close-up of the arc from the uh, ZVS driver. This is actually a DC flyback. Uh, there's different, you know, there's different types of flyback. There are AC and DC flybacks. Uh, this has a rectifier built in, uh, and we can easily test that. If I get um, a, a small high voltage capacitor here, and I connect up one lead here and one lead there, powers off by the way, just before anybody freaks out. Um, if it's DC, I'll get a spark. So if I plug this in, we get quite a, a vigorous spark on the output. Now about a week ago uh, or so I got hold of this uh, Tektronix 2232 oscilloscope and it happened to come with a, a current probe. Um, so we can actually measure the uh, primary side very, very easily uh, without worrying about blowing up my oscilloscope. So we'll flick over to channel two and we'll just hook on there, power the thing up, and on the screen there we can see our uh, our waveform. Oops, wrong channel. Uh, our waveform. So if we, you know, if we count the, if we if we do a little bit of maths and and count the divisions there, we've got like five, ten, fifteen, twenty, um, twenty-five. So 25 microseconds for a, a complete cycle. Uh, we can run that through the calculator real quick. Uh, we can do one divided by uh, it gives us a frequency of about 40 kilohertz. Um, you know, through the through the primary winding there. Um, this actually changes if we draw a spark. Um, I'm sure it will look awful on the oscilloscope. I'll just turn the brightness down. It's quite bright for the uh, the camera to pick up. That should do. Yeah, if we draw a spark, this, this will um, obviously change the frequency um, quite considerably. If we short it out, uh, we can see that the frequency uh, goes up um, quite considerably. Um, yeah, so, you know, we're, we're driving the transformer here at its resonant frequency, and if we load it, the resonant frequency essentially changes. Um, so hence, hence the change in frequency there, but pretty cool. Thanks for watching this episode of Les's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.